Thank you, Mr. President, for giving me the incredible opportunity to speak in tonight's historic debate. And can I just say before I begin, it feels wonderful to be back in a packed chamber once again. I remember my first no confidence debate this time last year. I was gazing down from the gallery up there in awe of the fierce passion of the speakers. Little did I know that a year later, after a few coffees on Turl Street and the odd profile picture change on Facebook, that I'd be opening the debate. So I'm very grateful. And members, welcome back. And freshers, I really hope you enjoy yourselves tonight. It has been a long five weeks. Already, Liz Truss has been a catastrophic prime minister, promising growth, growth, growth. She has delivered nothing but damage, disappointment, and disorder. In true Thatcherite tradition, she has recklessly abandoned the big state conservatism of Boris Johnson and Theresa May via deregulation, slashing taxes, and rolling back the government. With ruthless infighting and plans to backstab, her party has no confidence in her. With the pound crashing to an all-time low against the dollar, the financial market has no confidence in her. And with only 80,000 Conservative Party members voting for her, the British electorate has no confidence in her. It's really not looking good. <laughs> tonight, tonight, I want to make three very simple points. First, that we are being deceived by the Prime Minister and the Chancellor when they say that they are growing the economy. Second, that the government's response to the cost of living crisis is at best tone deaf. And third, that in a democracy, confidence should be earned in a fair election. But before I go on, it is my duty and indeed my honor to introduce the speakers for the opposition tonight. Opening the case for the opposition, you'll soon hear from Conrad Moe, a second year historian at Teddy Hall and an elected member of the Secretary's Committee. Now, I really hope Conrad has a bit more confidence in himself now than he did last night when he phoned me in a state of panic saying, Jenny, I don't know what to say. How do I defend these people? <laughs> him, Conrad, are you even a Tory? And he said, I'm not sure. I'm thinking we might be a Lib Dem now. <laughs> and even though Conrad is a great friend and a very hardworking member of committee, I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed that he so willingly U-turned on his principles and abandoned his true beliefs in a quick grab for political advancement. What I can say, members, is that he must have been thoroughly inspired by the Prime Minister. <laughs> then you will hear from Tim Green, a second year PPEist from Regent's Park College. And I don't want to be too mean to Tim tonight because he's going through quite a lot at the moment. Firstly, he had to deal with the death of the 119-year-old college tortoise at Regents. And secondly, he has to deal with the death of his reputation and credibility as senior access officer now that he's publicly defending the Tories tonight. <laughs> Closing the case for the opposition, you will hear from the Right Honourable Sir Desmond Swain. He's been a Conservative MP for New Forest West since 1997, but he hasn't always been so loyal to the party. He was very critical of the government's response to the COVID lockdown, describing it as a monstrous imposition. If he thinks that wearing a mask is an unacceptable breach of human rights, wait till he finds out what the Tories have been up to in Rwanda. <laughs> In this recent Tory leadership race, he originally supported Swella Braveman, who sadly can't make it tonight. <laughs> then he supported Rishi Sunak, and now he's here supporting Liz Truss. And I can't tell if that's just classic Tory flip-flopping or if he just loves choosing the losing side. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, these are your guests, and they are most welcome. Three weeks ago, Kwasi Kwarteng released his mini-budget. Three weeks ago, the market was sent into unimaginable turmoil. Kwarteng's plan is, at its core, unfair. It is the biggest package of tax cuts in half a century. It rejects a further windfall tax, it rejects caps on bankers' bonuses, and it rejects a national insurance rise, all against a backdrop of rising poverty and sinking living standards. What it does not reject, however, is allowing the rich to keep getting richer. 
After a pathetically desperate U-turn on the 45p tax rate, Kuateng needs to find £60 billion in savings from somewhere. And where do you think the Tories are going to get this money from? Once again, we have a Tory Chancellor who will suck money out of the departments that need it the most. As always, it will be the poorest people suffering from Tory incompetence. Let's just call it what it is, a total class war. And don't be surprised, we've had 12 years of this. This is what the Tories do, this is who they are, and that is what they stand for. After all, the Chancellor, an old Etonian, ex pick club member, and former investment banker is in every way on the side of the billionaires and the big businesses. When he released his mini budget, families panicked about how they were going to survive the winter while he sipped champagne with the big bankers who had benefited the most. He is out of touch, irresponsible, and ill-equipped to support the most vulnerable this winter. Do not have confidence in him. And don't just take my word for it, Kwasi Kwarteng's money budget got the worst reception of any financial statement since the Tories took charge 12 years ago. Very few people believe that this growth plan will live up to its name. Right now, there is an unprecedented lack of confidence in the country's economy, which begs the essential question of this debate. If the world's leading economists do not have confidence in the government's plan, then why on earth should we? And it doesn't stop there. We need to put this economic plan into perspective and think about what it actually means for real people's lives. More than a fifth of the population in this country live in poverty. That is 14.5 million people. And five million of those people are children. And over the next few months, those children will go to school hungry and the dinner ladies will turn them away at lunchtime if they have no money. Their parents will have to choose between heating the house or putting food on the table as their wages will simply not cover the bills. The Human Relief Charity spent the last 30 years focusing entirely on aid to the world's poorest countries abroad, but they just opened a food bank in Birmingham. We are the sixth richest country in the world. Something has gone seriously, seriously wrong. And the most disturbing part is, even if his plan did work, that economic growth would not be meaningful. It would not be redistributed fairly. It would not filter back into the rest of the economy. It would not increase wages, and it would not improve living standards. Kwarteng's devastating economic plan is undeniable proof that poverty is a political choice made by the government. The government has the means to put people before profit. They have the means to support the vulnerable, and they have the means to effectively handle this cost of living crisis. Make no mistake, then. It is not that they cannot help people, it is that they choose not to. I cannot imagine a worse response to the cost of living crisis. The Tories are making a mockery out of poverty. And finally, tonight we will talk a lot about confidence, but I think it's important to think about what confidence actually is and what it actually means. In a democracy, confidence is earned, and a vote is the ultimate expression of this confidence. So even if you think that everything I've said tonight is wrong, if you really like Liz Truss and think she's doing a great job, first, are you sure? <laughs> and second of all, you still need to accept the fact that Boris Johnson had the confidence of almost 14 million people in 2019, while Liz Truss only won her leadership race with 81,000 votes. That is a mere 81,000 expressions of confidence. So even if you are a Tory, and you would usually vote opposition tonight, remember that you voted for Boris Johnson, not Liz Truss. She has not yet earned your confidence, and therefore, she does not deserve it. She and her government have moved so far away from the Conservative manifesto that you voted for in 2019. Liz Truss has no plan, and indeed no real responsibility to fulfill those pledges, because they are not her pledges. You have been let down just as much as I have by this government, and if you think that the party you voted for should honour the pledges that you voted for, then you should not have confidence in this government. Let's take a look at what they promised and what was delivered. If you voted for the Tories in 2019, you voted for extra funding for the NHS, but you got an NHS in absolute crisis, with crippled health workers overworked and underpaid and rocketing waiting lists for millions of patients. You voted for millions more invested every week in schools, but you got an education system that is failing on every measure, and one in which the 15% poorest pupils do significantly worse at school at every stage. You voted for investment in clean energy solutions and green infrastructure, but you got Jacob Rees-Mogg, an absolute joke of an energy secretary who ignores renewable power options and only cares about supporting the oil and gas giants 
profiting from the climate crisis. You voted for levelling up, but Britain is more geographically unequal than any other rich country, and the North is plagued with lower wages, lower employment rates, and lower literacy rates. County Durham, which is where I'm from, is still recovering from the toxic Thatcherism of the 1980s and the immobilising austerity of the coming years, and yet Liz Truss is refusing to take levelling up seriously. You voted for a fairer points-based system to control immigration, and you got a Home Secretary who, at the most recent Tory conference, declared this. I would love to have a front page of the Telegraph with a plane taking off to Rwanda. That's my dream. It's my obsession. That is a Home Secretary who has brutally ignored the fact that the UN Refugee Agency ruled that policy as illegal. But again, do not be surprised. This party of law and order apparently has an addiction to committing crimes. You voted for a Tory party who wanted to unleash the full potential of this country, but I think it's safe to say that this great country has been plunged into great crisis and Liz Truss is certainly not the solution. It has been a long five weeks, but it has been an even longer 12 years. The Tories are not fit to govern and they do not deserve your confidence. Do not give it to them. So, if you think for one second that this government will ever support the poorest and most vulnerable of us, then you are lying to yourself. If you have no confidence in tax cuts for the rich, no confidence in child poverty, no confidence in rising debt, no confidence in an underfunded NHS, no confidence in a climate crisis, and no confidence in rocketing inequality, then you do not have confidence in this government. Vote proposition if you believe that there is such a thing as society. Vote proposition tonight if you think that 12 years of Tory decimation is long enough. And finally, vote proposition tonight in the hope that in next year's No Confidence debate, whoever stands here at this dispatch box can speak with a little bit more optimism and a little bit more confidence as I so wish I could have done tonight. Thank you very much.